Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I titled this video, Have You Exhorted, Exhort, Exhorted, Encouraged a Brother in Christ Lately? Turning your King James Bible, I decided to pull out the huge Bible. I did a video on this Bible. I'll put it in the chat about um, the best $25 I ever spent. An old King James Bible. It's a huge print. It's a big Bible, big print. And we talked about how it looks gold. Then you turn sideways, it looks red. It looks red now. Now it's gold. <laughs> but it's an old King James Bible. We're going to use this one today. So please turn with me in your King James Bibles. Okay, God's perfect written word for the English speaking people, but it's still God's perfect written word for anybody. Okay. But it helps to have English. I was talking to a brother in Christ about this. If you have people around you, in the faith that don't speak English and there's not a translation in their language, read the King James Bible and translate for them. Verbally translate for them and teach them the Word of God as best you can. Okay? But get your King James. I'm an English speaker. People who are going to be listening to this is going to be predominantly English speaking and readers. So please get your King James Bibles out. Turn with me to 1 Timothy 4.13. 1 Timothy 4.13. We read here, till I come, give attendance to reading. That's what we're doing here. Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. A lot of studies we do is based off of doctrine or instruction in righteousness. Right? That's important. But today we're talking about exhortation. Have you ex exhorted a brother in Christ lately? A brother or sister in Christ lately? Okay. Turn to 2 Timothy 4.2. 2 Timothy 4.2 Here we see, preach the word. Real quick, i got to stop for a second. I got into it with one of these Bible perversionists that say we need to know the Latin. He's one of those, he, was hard, he sounded like a hardcore Catholic, and he was really pushing the Bible perversions. Okay, and that mainly not just the Bible version, but we need to go a step further back, and we need to go to the original Latin and everything. It's like, uh, no, I got God's perfect written word in my hands right here in English. I don't need it in Latin. But one of the things is, as I pointed out to him, I said, you haven't quoted God's word to me at all. You haven't quoted the gospel, because he said I was a lost heathen, and he laughed and mocked the fact that I was a lost, that he believes I'm a lost heathen. And my thing was, is, how come you're not quoting scripture to me? How come you're not quoting the gospel to me? If you believe I'm lost, why aren't you trying to witness to me? I witness to him. I put up tons of verses for him. Uh, every comment after comment after comment, I put verses. I put Bible verses on how important God's word is. And how it's necessary to have a perfect written word of God. That, um, I hope that's not, it's my printer going off. But we have a perfect written word of God that gives us the perfect written record of the gospel of who the real Jesus Christ is to keep us from being fooled by all these false Jesuses. These antichrists. And one of the things he did in there, he said in the comment section, is the reason I don't quote scriptures because you'll just say that I'm misusing it or not interpreting it properly. And I'm like, but the Bible, I put in it, but the Bible still says we're to preach the word. He doesn't believe the Word of God. I found out later he didn't believe the Word of God. I just preached the Gospel to him, was done with him. But before that, I preached the Word of God to him, and he kept saying, you're taking that out of context. You're misusing that and everything. And, and we had a chain of comments back and forth, like eight to ten comments. And I was like, I'm quoting the Scripture to you, and you're saying I'm misusing it. You're saying I'm taking it out of context. Is that going to stop me from preaching the Word? And I quoted this verse to him, preach the word, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For this video, exhort is what we're going to focus on. But it's a testimony, brothers and sisters. There's people out there that they, they hate God's word. They don't want to quote God's word. And they'll use every excuse in the book not to use God's word. Ultimately, they don't want a perfect written word of God. In their hands. They don't want a perfect record in their hands. They want to be the final authority. But here it says preach the word. And one of the things it says we're supposed to be doing is exhorting. We're supposed to be exhorting the brethren. 
encouraging the brethren to stay in the Word of God, to stay in prayer, to keep our eyes on that blessed hope, looking for Jesus Christ every day with the life that we're living, taking God's Word, hiding in our heart, and living it, living it. Remember, not in words only, but in word and deed. That our words and our deeds, our actions, line up, and both our words and deeds line up with this book right here. We're supposed to encourage one another. Stand fast. Don't faint. Paul talks about it. Don't faint. Don't falter. Stand, stand, stand. Having done all to stand. He tells us about putting on the whole armor of God. He's encouraging us. He's exhorting us. Put on the whole armor of God. The helm for a hope of salvation. You have the shield of faith. The sword which is the word of God. You have, you're to gird up your loins with that sword. In other words, you're supposed to work. 2 Timothy 2.15. 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When you're girding up your loins with that sword of truth, it's work. You do it for two reasons. We have a study on this. You do it for two reasons. Uh, to go to battle and to go to work. That's why you gird up your loins. To go to battle and to go to work. Right? You can't fight for God's word if you don't know it. You can't fight for God's word if you're not hiding it in your heart and living it, getting to work. Girding up your loins for work. That's the work side. Living it. you got to live it in order to fight for it. How many of you, brothers and sisters Christ, have come across these people out there professing to be saved? And some might. Some might be saved. Some, I believe, are false converts. But they talk the talk, and they want to fight for God's word. I'm going to fight for God's word. And they talk the talk, but they're not walking the walk. Oh, yeah. There's times where God's convicted me in my life in certain areas of the Bible where he's like, are you walking the walk? Oh, Lord, I need to get better. I need to line up with you and I need to get busy walking the walk. There's times where I failed that test. But I'm talking about overall, you get to come across those people that are all talk and zero walk. Okay, we're not supposed to be just talk. We're supposed to be talk and walk. So one of the things the Bible tells us that we're supposed to do, brothers, is Christ, is we're supposed to exhort the brethren. We're to encourage the brethren, and I've said this before in the comment sections, under this video, under any video, the best exhortation I get is when a brother or sister in Christ throws scripture down that, that has to do with what we're talking about. Or they might throw scripture down saying, hey brother, what do you think of this? Or, hey brother, God showed me this the other day, and he shows scripture. Hey brother, you seem down, because there's some videos where I, I, was, I was like, well... I was getting a little bit sorrowful about not being part of a physical flock, a house church. And I was doing some teachings trying to encourage the brethren that if it's at all possible, if God's got doors open, you better get in there and you better be praising God and thanking God for the fellowship you have, the face-to-face -face fellowship that you do have. Okay? And don't take it lightly because today online, on, on the online world, the fantasy world online, people take fellowship too, uh, too lightly. They'll kick people, it seems like people are just kicking each other around. Just kick them to the curb left and right. There's not much love being shown on, 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 online for the brothers and sisters in Christ. Why? Because what do I got to lose? They're just some name online. But if it's face to face, oh boy, it's a lot harder to just kick someone to the curb when it's face to face, isn't it? But on here, you don't have to face anybody. You can act like, I hate to say this, you can be a coward and hide behind the camera, behind a computer, and you don't have to face anybody. And the point I need to make here real quick when I did that study is, is I had a brother in Christ think that I'm against the little things. I'm not. I appreciate the exhortation I get in the comment section. I do. I appreciate the emails, and we're going to talk about an email that a brother in Christ sent me as an example of encouraging someone. Okay? I do. I'm not saying don't email. If you can't fellowship face to face, then just don't do anything. That wasn't what that teaching was all about, brothers and Christ. It was to encourage you to do all that you can to, to, to have face to face fellowship. The doors might, and I even said that in that study, the doors might be all closed for face-to-face -face fellowship. But are you doing everything you can? Um, yesterday, 
think it was yesterday or the day before, I got to fellowship with the Brother in Christ on Skype. It's a video chat program where I got to video chat with the Brother in Christ for two hours. And we talked about different things in the Word of God. He had some questions. I learned some things. And um, we just went through the Word of God. And then we asked each other how each other's doing in their walk with the Lord and their life. Because uh, we're so spread out. Um, so I got to do that, and it was a great blessing. I'm praising the Lord. Every time I get to face-to-face -to -face chat with someone, video chat, a brother in Christ, I, I jump up and down and praise God. It's, in these last days, it seems to be like next to impossible to have those things. But I get emails from brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? I get emails. Um, speaking of email, I got an email from a brother in Christ that starts with, uh, and I'm not going to do the brother's name, but a brother in Christ says, Hey there, Brother Philip. It's been too long since I last checked in with you. Yes, brother, but I'm so grateful that you do check in every once in a while. Thank you, thank you for all the brother, sister Christ that email me every once in a while. Even if it's once a month, email me every once in a while to see how I'm doing. I thank you, brother, sister Christ. I've been keeping up with your videos, though, and you appear to be in good spirits, at least on camera. I, I, you know, I try. <laughs> I try. I know behind the camera when I sit here, I pray a little bit before I start the video, and it's like, you can kind of calm, if you're upset about something, you can calm down before you start the video, or if you're sad about something, you get to pray, and God lifts your spirits, and then you start the video. Um, one of the things I've been struggling with is my health a little bit. Um, but just the sorrows of loneliness is something the Lord's really working on me lately. He really is. And He's helping me to be content, content with what He has for me. The ministry, I'm not looking for something huge. I'm not trying to be like what those... The Bible talks about they, they and I know it's a parable, but they that are uh, faithful and little are faithful in much. If you can't be faithful with what God has given you, why are you asking God for more? And that just, this guy right here, it's a smack upside the head. I'm not, I was almost going to smack, I'm not going to smack myself, but it's like a smack upside the head. You're right, Lord, I need to be content with what I have. And thank you every day for everything that you've given me. Thank you for this letter. Right? Thank the Lord for this letter and thank the brother for this letter. Um... I love talking about God's Word. I love talking with, about God's Word with the brethren. I love hearing from you, brothers and Christ. I pray for you all the time. It says here, I pray that you continue to be strong in your faith. Thank you. Thank you for that exhortation. I, I pray that too. I don't... Brothers and Christ, the falling away today, I've seen it more and more among the body of Christ where they don't take this as much as serious as they used to. They don't take the Word of God as serious as they used to. They get distracted by the flesh. They get distracted by the world. Some of them get, get distracted by pleasing men and women and children of this world over pleasing God. We seem to be button heads way too much lately, brother says Christ, way too much. We need to stand for the truth, keep the faith, don't compromise. But it seems the body of Christ is really button heads a lot lately. So thank you for that. I pray that you continue to be strong in the faith. And here it is. You are an encouragement to all the brothers and sisters. I thank you for that, brothers and Christ, because there's times where I sit there, and it's, I call it a dry spell, where I don't hear from the brothers and sisters in Christ for a while, I don't get many comments, I don't get many emails, it could be like two weeks to a month, and I'm sitting there, and I'll be sitting there, and I'll be talking to the Lord and saying, Lord, I want to serve you, I want to continue preaching your word, I want to continue being here for the brethren if they need me, but am I really making a difference? And you know what happens? I'll get an email a day, a day or two later after really hardcore praying with the Lord and getting down. I'll get an email like this that lifts my spirit. I'll get a comment under one of my videos. This was a great teaching. Thank you. It helped me with such and such. Here's this, here's this verse that you could have also used. And it lets me know that they're watching they're listening. I'm helping at least one. If I'm helping at least one brother or sister in Christ continue to live for the Lord, continue to stay in this book, read it, hide it in their heart, live it, keep their eyes on Jesus Christ, strengthen their prayer life, I need to be content with that. Those that are faithful in little are faithful in much. 
thank you for that encouragement, brother, says, brother that wrote this. Thank you for the encouragement. And he's not the only one. Thank all the brothers and sisters of Christ for your encouragement. And I give God all the glory. I try to. I try not to take the glory. I just Because I'm not looking for this. I know some brethren have fallen in the trap that they want this. They want all the praise. And that I always try to correct someone. When they try to give me the praise, I correct them in the comment section and say, give God the praise for using me. As a good example. <laughs> I gotta throw that out there. As a good example, because God can God has used me as a bad example. I've made mistakes, brothers and Christ. I have failed the brethren before. I've had videos on that. I have failed uh, the Lord first and foremost, but I failed the brethren. I failed my mentor. I, I failed people. I, okay. I've made mistakes. God can use me as a bad example, or he can use me as a good example. I pray he uses me as a good example. But if through my bad examples, through my mistakes, the brethren can learn something and rise up above my mistake and not make the same mistake that I make, praise the Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me. I saw the new chicks that you had hatched. Wonderful blessing there. Wonderful blessings there. Uh, yes, there is. Uh, the reason I made that really quick update, the reason, I don't know if people caught on to it when I did that 30-second video of the, of the baby chicks, is that I've never had every egg hatch. I've always had a couple duds that just, that weren't, uh, they didn't have any egg chickens in it, and then I've had one or two that will, when I do a full set of eight to nine, um, I'll have one or two that have no chicken in it, and then I'll have like at least one where the chicken started to develop and somehow, some, for some reason, halfway through the development, it stopped growing and just died. Okay. For me to get eight chickens out of eight eggs, I was praising God. That is a great blessing. Praise God. To God be the glory. Always to God be the glory. Even when I don't get them all, like I get six out of eight, uh, nine, or I get f one time I got four out of eight. I only got half. I still praise God for the four that He gave me. Okay. If I got none, I'd still praise God, saying, "Hey, thank you for letting me try, Lord, for giving me the opportunity to try." Okay. But that was the big issue about that video. Was that I was still just praising God, going, "Maybe it's because I'm down to um, five hens." One rooster and five hens. Evidently, one rooster can handle five hens. But when I get up to ten hens, because that's when I usually incubate them, is when I got ten hens and I'm going to end up butchering a few of the old ones, and I'm trying to get some young ones to come in behind them. And um, maybe one rooster can't keep up with ten hens. But since I'm down to just five hens, when I was able to grab two to three days' worth of eggs and put it in the incubator, all eight eggs hatched. It was such a blessing. Such a blessing from the Lord. Also, your new canine edition. He looks like a wonderful companion. If you're talking about Declan, he's around here somewhere. But if you're talking about Declan, he is. Like I said before, he has a lot of energy. I'm used to Victoria. If you follow on this channel, Victoria is my miniature schnauzer. I've had her. She's 14 years old now. And she goes very slow. She hardly wants to walk, so I had to start getting used to doing walks on my own. So I can still stay in shape and try to be in shape. Um, so, uh, I got used to going slow, and then when I got Declan and we started going for walks, he's pulling me, saying, let's go, let's go, let's go, and I just was shocked at how slow I got used to walking, and boy, it got my heart rate up, because <laughs> we go for long walks. I remember I live on the, the mountainside, and Declan is also a schnauzer, but I think he's more of a full-size schnauzer, because he's way bigger than Victoria is. Victoria's a miniature schnauzer, he's more of a full-size schnauzer. But I live on the hillside, so the road goes uphill pretty good and goes downhill. So even if you go downhill first thinking, wow, this is great, you got to come back uphill. If you do the fight uphill first, because I like walking both ways, not at the same time, but sometimes I'll go the uphill way first and come down, and then another time of the walk of the day, I'll go the downhill. But if you go up the hill, you feel great coming down, but it's a hard walk up. Um, so he is... Thankfully that Victoria has a youthful pup to keep her entertained as well. Yes, Victoria sees um, Declan, and when I normally couldn't get her to walk, I'd take her out to the, to the driveway and she'd do her, th her thing, uh, do her business. 
she'd just be standing there like, I'm, I'm bored, I just want to come, go back inside, I don't want to move, because I think she's starting to get a little arthritis, so she doesn't like to move or anything like that. So when I'm taking Declan out, the younger pup, he's excited, he wants to go out, and he wants to do things, and she'll see him and jump and bark, and he'll, she'll start following him, and she gets all this energy to want to walk. And he's actually encouraged her to do a full walk most days. Some days she still doesn't want to walk, but some days she gets really excited and she does a, a full walk with us down. It's the downhill track that we do down to the horse ranch. Take a look at some of the horses and then the mountainside, and then we walk all the way back up. So, yes, thank God. I, it's such a blessing. I was going to wait till Victoria passed, and then I didn't know if I was going to get another dog, but somebody was uh, needed uh, Declan needed a home and he looked like a schnauzer and he was already potty trained he's already trained he comes when I call him uh, he, he you know he does his business outside he's potty trained um, so that was a blessing too so there's a lot of blessings in disguise and he loves it here he's taken a liking to me he's kind of like cautious about other people but and I'm trying to teach him I don't know if he was raised like by an elderly couple where he just was kept inside and didn't get to really see the world and see other people hardly. So I'm trying to introduce him to some of the neighbors to get him to be friendly. But to me, he took to me right away. He, he loves me. But I'm not working on him <laughs> like in other people. And, but thank you for that. Yes, it was a blessing from the Lord. Not much going on out this way during this time of year. We wrapped up making our yearly batch of maple syrup last week. That's always a delicious time of the year. I guess it's, it's funny this brother says this. Um, I got something to show. I'm starting to look at purchasing some seeds for the high tunnel soon. Have to get those ready. Spring will be here before we know it. Right? I think it has something to do with the, the maple trees and getting the maple syrup and everything, like growing trees, growing things. Okay. But it's funny that you mention that, brother, because I got this, and I'll show a picture, close-up picture of it, but I got pure maple syrup. I got this from a neighbor, and I like to do hot teas. So let's go back to the step one. I like to do hot teas. And I'm not one of those guys that really like hot, hot. No, so, some people like their coffee really hot. Some people like their tea, like burning your lip. To me, it's like burning your mouth, burning your tongue hot. That's not me. It's really super hot. I, what I like about it when it's super hot, Brother Says Christ, is I'll do um, oils. Uh, mint oil is my favorite. Uh, but I went and bought this other oil from uh, the farmer's market. These are all natural oils. And what I'll do is when it's burning hot and it's really cold, and I get to sit. I like to sit outside, even if I have to wrap in a blanket. If it's cold or not, I like to sit outside. I like to spend time outside with the Lord, if it's at all possible. Uh, some of you that watch this ministry, you know that there's a lot of temptation here for me. I gave up a lot of things for the Lord, and being it trapped indoors around t the computer and TV for Hollywood movies, TV shows, and video games, it's that it's that temptation, and God helped me overcome that temptation in my life by replacing a bad addiction with a good addiction, the outdoors. I, I love, the. I have a garden that the Lord blessed me with, praise the Lord. I've got projects to do, but when it's pouring down rain and you've cleaned the house so many times and you sit down and do a Bible study and you listen to Bible studies, I get a little restless being stuck inside. So I like to sit out there no matter what. So when it's, when it's super hot, I'll put a few drops of that oil in there and you just sit here and you smell it in and it helps clean up your sinuses, and it just you're smelling it. It's like aromatherapy. That's what I like to do. I also like to put honey, a little drop of raw honey, natural honey. Okay. I'll show a picture of this too. I get natural honey from the local um, farmers market. Sorry about that. From the local farmers market, I get honey from them, and it's kind of expensive. Don't get me wrong. If you wanted some cheap two dollar honey. Ever since I went, it's, it's, it's amazing, Brother Says Christ. If you go to eating healthy, you go to having healthy things around you, when you start going around bad things, it just sticks out like a sore thumb. Music. I, start, I listen to a lot of peaceful music and hymns. And anytime I hear any music where the beat, equal, the rhythm is as fast as your heart or the beat is pumping, it just gives me a headache. I haven't been around that for so long. When I do hear it, like in public, when someone's doing it with their car, or you're walking through the store having to listen to it sometimes because you're trying to grab what you need, it's just like, ugh. 
hurts my ears. Gives me a little bit of a headache. Same thing with food. When you start eating healthy, if you try to go back to eating the bad food, you're just like, this is horrible. I got the good honey. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Yes, it's more expensive. Um, this doesn't have a price on it, but uh, the farmer's market, something like this is like, six, is like anywhere between 12 to $16. And it's getting expensive because we're going through some uh, hard times right now, but the price prices are going up. But I could get the equivalent of this at the store for like two to three bucks. The cheap stuff, the bad stuff, the synthetic stuff, if you want to say. But I, I was blessed by having a farmer's market here, and God put a desire in my heart to try to eat healthy. I'm still working on it. I'm still working on it. Um, but I like to put a little honey in, in with my hot tea. And then, like I said, a neighbor... He gave me uh, pure maple syrup, pure maple syrup, and I haven't tried it yet, but he, he, I just got this email talking about maple syrup from a brother in Christ, and I got this, okay? and um, speaking of exhortation from a, a brothers and sisters in Christ, I got an email from a sister in Christ that he, she heard me talking about my glasses, I had my glasses on, um, I've had to change my prescription. Sometimes they get uh, scratched up, and that's what causes the headaches because I have astigmatism. And when they start scratching, I don't actually see it, the, the fine scratches, but my brain sees it. And it causes you to get a little bit of a headache, even though you can see things. It, you start getting a headache, and you wonder, why am I getting a headache? Your glasses aren't clean. They've got scratches on them, or they're not clean. So I've been doing exercises where I look at a distance. You get so used to looking at things up close. The one of the exercises I looked up is you take your glasses off and you look. I know I look a little weird without glasses. Um, but you look at things far away. And you try to zoom in as best you can on things that are at a distance. Mountains, trees that are uh, a good distance away. Okay, i got a view of the ocean a little bit. And the lighthouse. So I'll look down there. And I'll try to exercise my eyes because one of the, our problems with our eyes, Brother Sister Christ, is we get so used to up close, you don't hardly look up. Even with the people who love to read hardcore, you spend a lot of times with things right up close. Your eyes are supposed to do both. You're supposed to be looking at things at far distance as well as looking at something up close. But the sister heard me talking about that, and this is a year or two, a few years back. She got me into, it's called Clear Eye. Support health, Healthy Retina and Eyesight, and it's an herbal tea. And she got me this, that's what I'm drinking right now. And it was a letter where she was encouraging me with scripture, and encouraging me to live for the Lord and continue to do the Lord's work, praise the Lord, and she was helping me out with my eyes. And I praise God for that. So, this just like kind of comes around, just comes around, comes around. Um... I don't know if you noticed, but on the mug, it, said, it has an old car, and it says Philip. I don't think you guys can see it, but just in case anybody could see it, it's not because I'm, oh, I'm so into myself. Philip, I'm just so into myself. I know the enemies would say that. Enemy of, of the brethren that just try to use anything and everything. But this cup used to belong to my grandfather, and my grandfather has passed away. And he, uh, my uncle, which is my grandfather's son, my uncle, my mom's brother, he gave me my grandfather's Bible. And this is the Bible that we were using by a Bible by the, ocean, uh, the pond until I had to move the pond and couldn't set by the pond anymore. Um, this is the one I've tried to use um, for, I'm going to start trying to use for Bible by the ocean, uh, ocean. Bible by the fireside. When we had the fire going and we read Psalms and everything, I had some brothers say they love when you just sit there and read the Word of God and talk about it, just reading it verse by verse and talking about it and getting you guys to do the same thing because that's what I do when it's just me and the Lord. I read the verses, talk about it, say, hey, Lord, this verse reminds me of this verse over here and this verse reminds me of that verse over there. And we talk. I talk with the Lord about His Word all the time. And that's what those videos were to encourage you to do, Brother Jesus Christ, is to sit there and talk, to exhort you and encourage you to sit there. When you read the Word of God, don't just read it and say, okay, I'm done. I read it for the day. I read it. I'm good. I, I can check that off. When you're reading the Word of God, put your finger in places and stop and talk to the Lord about what you're reading. Say, Lord, doesn't this remind me of this over here? Doesn't this remind me of that over there? Talk to the Lord about the Word as you're reading it. Don't just be one of those people, okay, I read it, I'm good, I'm done. Right? Don't be like that, Brother Sister Christ. Talk to the Lord. He wants you to talk to Him. He wants to hear from you. And He loves to talk to you. Open His Scripture to you, Brother Sister Christ. Open His Word to you. 
Right. But I'm praying for you, brother, that you know that all works out. The seeds and the um, the maple, getting the maple syrup. Right. Now I don't know how you guys do it, but but I've, I've had seen videos. It's been a while since I've looked at the process of how to get maple syrup out, and then you got to boil it for a while, and you got to you got to spoon it through with uh, some screens. I forgot what, to call, what you call them, but they're like little cups that are screens. So it'll let the maple syrup go through, but you can get all the excess junk out and everything. I know about apples when I do uh, apple juice. And you can squish all the juice down and everything, but I leave the pulp in a little bit because the pulp is good for you. But I know you can sift out the pulp and make it where it's just pure juice. And pretty good like I said the natural stuff doing it by hand if you know what you're doing go buy tons of apples and make some apple juice make a few jars of apple juice every year homemade apple juice amazing all right it's nothing like the store-bought nothing yeah. all right brother keep up the good work out on the side of out on that side of the country, he's on. He's that's that seems what it be, brother sister Christ. All the brothers sister Christ that really talk to me, that need prayer, that hit me up with prayer requests, and I hit you, brother sister Christ, up with prayer requests and fellowship with them. I got a brother in Christ in Illinois. I've got a brother in Christ in I Iowa. Uh, I used to be. I used to fellowship with a brother in Christ in Maine. Okay, uh, brother and uh, sister in Christ in Belgium. Okay, that's halfway across. It just seems like you you get all these brothers and sisters in Christ that love you and care about you, and they're just so far away. We're just so spread out, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are. Uh, but that doesn't mean we're limited. God's opening doors to us. Emails, writing letters, uh, video chats, phone calls. We got phone. I have a phone. Now, I'm not just going to give out my number to anybody, but I've given it out to some of the brethren that they can call me when they want to talk. All right. But uh, keep up the good work on that side of the country. Yeah, we're kind of spread out. We'll email again later. Praise the Lord for all the emails that I've gotten from the brethren as a whole. I'll end this mess. I'll end with a passage from 1 Peter chapter 1 that I was reading today. I'm excited because I want to say this. I praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters Christ, this is the best way to exhort brothers and sisters in Christ. 1 Peter chapter 1. Let's turn there. 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 22. Okay. On down to 25. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. You know what unfeigned means, brothers says Christ? Some of them don't. I've had brethren say, I love you, brother. I'm here for you, brother. I'm praying for you, brother. And now they despise me with such hate and bitterness. They don't even call me brother. They think I'm a, a lost heathen heretic on my way to hell. You know what unfeigned is? It's not fake. We tend to say, I love you, brother, just as like a greeting. It's not meant to be just a greeting. It's meant to be a life application. True love is action. It's not words. It's not feeling. It's action. Your words and your deeds need to line up with unfeigned love of the brethren. Seeing that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. There's brethren I disagree with, brother says Christ. There's brethren that are falling away. There's brethren that have treated me like junk, bearing false witness, backbiting and whispering, name calling. But I still love them. I'm still praying for them that God will pick them up from that fallen state and get them back on the right path. That God shocks their heart and wakes them up to the fact that they need to have love for the brethren, action, deeds. And yes, there's times where I got corrected by brethren because I failed this. I'm not innocent. I'm not perfect in this area. I'm trying my best, but I'm trying to encourage you, brothers and sisters Christ, just as this brother's encouraging me, we need to work hard, harder on loving our brothers and sisters in Christ. You might have to break fellowship with them, but how you break fellowship with them shows whether you love them or you were always lying to them when you said you loved them. I'm just going to throw that right in the brethren's face. 
How you break fellowship with them determines whether you love that brother or sister in Christ or you hated them from the very beginning. You might have to break fellowship. I've had to break fellowship with people. Some I believe are lost. Some I believe are saved. I still pray for both of them. The lost and the saved. I pray for them. I pray for them. Are you still praying? For those of you who have turned your back on me because you believe I'm wrong somewhere and I could be. But you need to come talk to me about it so I can get back on the right path if I'm wrong. If I'm right and you're wrong, you need to repent in my... Remember, I've always said this, brothers and Christ. Let's find out where the Bible's right, and let's find out where we're wrong. Why? Because the Bible is always right. God's Word's always right. If it looks like I'm right, it's not because I'm right. It's because I'm doing my best to line up with this book. And where I'm wrong, it's not because the book is wrong, it's because I'm not lining up with this book and I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Pure heart. We need to have more love for the brethren, brothers, this Christ. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, being born again, the changed life. Love. Remember Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. If you love me, keep my commandments. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. True love is action. Okay? The changed life, true love for Jesus Christ, is when he saves you, he is now your commander. I had people give me thumbs down on this. He's your commander-in-chief. I always say commander-in-chief, I was in the military. We always say that. That's your commander-in-chief. He says we have to do it, we have to do it. Because there were some things we had to do that I was like, this is... Five times the work, and it's not efficient, but that's the way your commander-in-chief said he wants it. That's the way you do it. Yes, sir. Now, the Bible says Jesus is our capital L Lord. He's our capital K King. He's, the ma he's our master. He's our savior. He's our friend. But remember, he said, ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Are you Jesus' friend? You do want so every command. The change life. When you get saved, you care all you, you fear God and you care about what He wants. You care about His way over any anything else in the world. Over your flesh's way, over the world's way. It's a hundred percent about God and His Word in your life. The changed life. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. People out there who always fight us, brother says Christ, on the perfect written word of God. It's by the word of God that we get saved. It's by the word of God that we have a changed life. The Holy Spirit comes in and guides us into what? All truth. What did Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the Holy Spirit comes in and shows us who the real Jesus is, but how? Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Be ye holy as I am holy. So how do we know our Savior really well? The Holy Ghost opens this book to us and teaches us how to live for Him. Be a good representative. Remember, we're ambassadors for Jesus Christ. For all flesh is of grass. I say, the Word of God which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as, is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower withereth. Thereof falleth away. Remember when the Bible talks about how we need to stop focusing on temporal things and focus on the things that are eternal? Yes, you've got your job down here, brother, says Christ. Yes, you, if you're a, a, a sister in Christ and you're a keeper at home, um, you got family to raise. Uh, men out there, you got family to take care of. But you need to be careful not to get so distracted by the temporal that you stop, for, you forget about the eternal. It's all about down here and getting things down here and doing things down here. You forget that we're supposed to be uh, earning rewards in heaven. We're supposed to be storing up riches in heaven with what we do down here and how we live our life, how we treat each other, brothers and sisters in Christ, how we treat each other. 25. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. You know, there's times, Brother Sister Christ, where I, I'm looking around and the trees, I'm sitting out there. I've been here uh, seven years now, and I was shocked at how some of the trees have changed. There was certain distinction on the trees that made the tree stick out like a sore thumb. And I would say, okay, that tree, I've got it picked out of my head. When I see that tree, I know that tree. And I see that tree, I know that. I have one out there I call it a bonsai tree. It's a tall, 
uh, pine tree, but somebody has cut all the limbs off the bottom so you can have the view. And the very top there, uh, it just has a little bush on the top. And it's at an angle that the top part of it looks like a bonsai tree. And I go, there's the bonsai tree, there's this tree. Over time, things change. The trees grow up, all their imperfections kind of disappear, and they just look like a normal tree, just like any of the other trees. And it shows the passage of time. And I'll sit there and talk with the Lord, and I'll make the statement. I'll say, Lord, I'm looking at things I have to repair on the house. How we had, I just did a big repair on the house. Um, uh, going around the house and trying to fix things outside the house as well as inside the house. How things fall apart and need to be replaced. And I'll look at him and I'll say, you know what, Lord? Nothing lasts forever. And I'll pause for a second. And then I'll be like, accept you and your word, Lord. The precious promises that come from your, your word and you, Lord, that's the only thing I can count on that will last forever. Yes, our salvation, we're sealed into the day of redemption, but I'm talking about present tense. This body is falling apart. This wicked body of flesh is falling apart. It's not going to last forever. The only thing that's going to last forever is God's word. God and, God and His word. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Three times in the four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. That's how important it is to, to realize that His word is always available in any given time period. Whether it's the spoken word, the spoken word that gets written down, our God manifest in the flesh comes down and talks to us. In the Old Testament, an angel of the Lord, that man, the captain of the host of heaven, okay, he came down in the likeness of sinful flesh, as you know, in the, in the Gospels. But God had a body in the Old Testament. He has the body in the Gospel. And He has a body going out to eternity. The glorified Jesus Christ. Okay? But He's always talking to us. In any given period, His Word is there. Like I said, whether it's a spoken word. Remember the Holy Spirit? Prophet, prophets and people of the past spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And what does the Holy Ghost do? What he hear, that shall he speaks. God the Father says it, the Holy Spirit repeats it to us. You got the Holy Spirit in you? The Holy Spirit opens this book to you. But it's God the Father that's opening this book to you. But not trying to go off too much on that, but brothers is Christ. The word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. This is the word. This is the word. Brother, says Christ, have you encouraged and exhorted a brother or sister in Christ lately? When's the last time you emailed a brother or sister in Christ? When's the last time you wrote a letter? When's the last time you called? When's the last time you video chatted? If you have a brother in Christ that's within like an hour or two driving, when's the last time you got together and face-to-face -to -face fellowship? Going over to a brother's house and saying, Hey brother, I just stopped by to see how you guys were doing and do you need help with anything? Any prayer requests? How are you doing brother? How's your walk with the Lord going? Have you exhorted the brethren lately? Are you, in these last days, it just seemed like, are you falling in the trap of, be, of thinking you're so isolated? Sometimes I feel like it. You're so isolated that... Oh, I just have to do without. I just have to go without any fellowship whatsoever. Know this is Christ. Turn to uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.1. Thank you, brother, for that email, uh, email. Thank you all the brothers and sisters in Christ for your emails, for your suggestion with the eyes, um, for your emails. I want to end this with one verse and to be an encouragement to the body of Christ. When's the last time you've exhorted a brother or sister in Christ? When's the last time you prayed for one? Even if you don't like them, even if you, they hurt you, even if uh, they've fallen away and, and become worldly and their priorities are all messed up, you know, regardless, when's the last time you prayed for them? Are you praying for the brothers and sisters in Christ? Are you praying for me, brothers? I, I need prayer. I'm praying for you, brothers, says Christ. I pray for me. I need prayer. 
I struggle with the flesh just like you do. I make mistakes just like you do. I need prayer just as much as you do, brothers and sisters Christ. When's the last time? Turn with me. We're going to end with 1 Thessalonians 4.1. 1 Thessalonians. It's a lot harder when I don't have my tabs, so I have to get used to remembering where the books are. 1 Thessalonians 4.1. Chapter 4, verses 1. We're going to end here, brothers and sisters of Christ. And this is my encouragement. This is my verse of encouragement. For the brother who wrote this, I'll get you an email back. Um, and I, when I get emails, I like to pray over them. I like to read them. Sometimes I'll print them out and sit outside and, and go over them a few times and talk with the Lord about them before I respond. So when you send it to me, even though it's instant, if I don't respond back for a few days, that's one of the reasons why. I like to pray about it. I like to take in the encouragement. If you have questions, actually talk to the Lord about it before I come back. I don't want to be one of those people with the, I have all the answers and i got to come back with the, the answer just like that. I like to take time and talk with the Lord. Study the issue. Even if I think I know it by heart, I still like to spend time in it to refresh my heart. That word that I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. you got to refresh your heart a lot. Especially me. Right. But I want to end this with uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.1. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you, exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God. We're supposed to be a living example, and we're supposed to exhort each other, not just with our words, but our actions. Encourage one another. Our stands for the Word of God, our stands for absolute truth, our stands against sin and wickedness. Our stands against worldliness. Our stands against false idols. Our stands for the real Jesus Christ. Our stands for what is good and righteous and true. Your actions encourage the brethren just as much as words do. That as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God. My biggest exhort, exhort, exhorting you, brothers and Christ, is to please God. First and foremost, don't let anything trump you pleasing God. Don't let pleasing a family member, wife, husband, children, neighbors, co-workers, friends, the body of Christ, make sure that you're not compromising and pleasing anybody over pleasing God. You can please it. Your, your wife, your husband, you can please, you're supposed to. You can please your children in a good way. Um, you can please your, your co-workers and stuff like that. But don't compromise thinking pleasing them when is not more important than pleasing God. Pleasing God comes first. And if that means displeasing, like upsetting all that groups of people that I just talked about, then you upset them and say, i got to please God first. God comes first. His way comes first. His word comes first. So ye would abound more and more. Brothers and Christ, that's my, my hope for you, brothers and Christ, that you abound more and more in the faith and your walk with the Lord in prayer, your Bible reading, your Bible studying, your life that you live for Jesus Christ. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next study. But I'm going to ask this question one last time. When's the last time you exhorted a brother or sister in Christ?